Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us today to stay curious. On this July 7th, 2022, we've got a wonderful program for you to talk about a couple space shuttle missions of July. We're celebrating 11 shuttle missions in July. We're going to focus on uh, three of those missions. One wasn't actually launched in July. It landed in July with a very special passenger, America's first astronaut cosmonaut, Norm Thaggard. And he rode back in an artifact that we have in our space museum, many of you have seen. And we'll show you that in a minute. And then we're going to talk a lot about a wonderful astronaut, Eileen Collins, America's first, well, the world's first commander of a spaceship. She piloted a shuttle twice and then commanded twice. Both of her commands are in the month of July. And we have met her many times. I have. She, uh, Marty's met her. She's a very wonderful person. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about her uh, today and uh, her fabulous uh, missions, STS-93, which was Chandra, uh, a major astronomical observatory. And then, of course, she was the commander of our return to flight after the loss of Space Shuttle Columbia. So Marty Winkles behind our stream labs. We just had Jessica Galloway, our Trekkie Techie in here, fine tuning a few things. And uh, we wanted to just kick off. Look at the beautiful pan the beautiful montage here. Uh, sequence. Uh, thank you, Mark Usiak. He is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, photographed more than 70 launches with his brother Mar uh, Tom and their team uh, of photographers uh, down here. And uh, Marty, you got something? He's just walking around there. We had a great show with Mr. Hugh Harris yesterday. Uh, Marty's cleaning up the, the mess Hugh made there yesterday. <laughs> no, I made the mess with Hugh Harris, thank you for supporting our museum with your program every month. It is a valuable insight that this 89-year-old voice of NASA, the public affairs officer for uh, his whole career over almost 35 years at, at NASA. Hugh Harris, thank you. Go back and watch his program yesterday and you'll learn a lot. Uh, he had some interesting comments about the Apollo 11. And uh, we just 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 love love you to death, Hugh. Thank you for being part of this. He'll be back. I think we booked him for August 10th uh, to do the shuttles of August. Well, we want to uh, also make people aware that we're going to be closed from July 18th and reopen August 8th because we're going to have new carpet put in our humble museum. And to help pay for that, Artist Chris Callie has agreed to support that endeavor with a fundraiser of his late father, Paul, and Chris's wonderful artwork. Uh, Chris's uh, Gemini spacewalk is on the left. His father did the uh, sketch of Neil Armstrong and the Power to Go, which is uh, a couple stories tall on a wall, this image at Huntsville, Alabama. So you can own these t-shirts for $25 or $22 for the black and white. There is the way that you link to it with your QR code or go to that link there. Uh, American Space Museum Square, uh, our stores dot square site there. And that is uh, Chris with his father, Paul, who passed away in 2010 uh, at the uh, Space Center on, on the grounds of uh, sketching some shuttles, I believe, uh, during that time. So thank you, Chris, for supporting our museum this way. We are anxious to help you all stay curious with the legacy of this beautiful uh, family of uh, artists there and uh, you're going to learn a lot about Mr. Paul Cowley uh, and his son Chris. They are not just space artists. They are have been involved in more than 40 U.S. postage stamps of all kinds of subjects. So uh, sneak peek there that popped up was look speaking of art look at these pieces of artwork of the Apollo 11 astronauts that is on the left Brenda Boulding all right, and that is a Karen Conklin, uh, our executive director. And uh, th there's a cute little story to these. These were given to our museum yesterday by Brenda and her husband, Ron. Thank you, thank you very much. We did a, an event that is on our Stay Curious broadcast in February at the Moore Center, the birthplace of the Civil Rights Movement, just 10 miles from our museum in Mims, Florida. And Brenda has a lot of African-Americans 
in artwork of this style. They're gorgeous from President Obama to Michelle Obama to even Bob Marley's up there. And uh, in this unique style of hers that uh, she learned at the uh, Ringling Brothers Art School in, in Sarasota. Uh, and uh, so I met her there. I loved her artwork. I said, you ought to consider doing astronauts. And by golly, they called me Tuesday. Her husband, Ron, said my wife has done some astronaut uh, portraits she'd like for to give to the museum. And uh, oh my God, uh, we couldn't believe it. They're beautiful. And uh, you can buy the three of these on a, a one uh, uh, for $195, I think. We listed that on Facebook. But Brenda, thank you. They're hanging in our merchandise uh, uh, entrance to our museum as we speak. That, of course, is left to right. Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and Neil Armstrong. Cool, aren't they, Marty? very impactful and uh, uh they're, they're they're big and just bold and uh brenda god bless you we appreciate you supporting our museum in this way and we're sure that we'll talk some more about this lady brenda bolding at uh, gmail.com brenda bolding art.com it's great to make friends like that marty with uh, our museum i just want to comment that it's it is uh partners like uh uh, Chris Callie, Mark and Tom Usiak, and Brenda and Ron Bolding that make our world go round. All right. We're a proud nonprofit and with great support from quality people like this, we know our future is bright. And Carlton Bailey. And, Car and Carlton Bailey supporting us too. That's right. Uh, hi, Carlton. He's uh, just come in from feeding the squirrels out in the backyard and and his uh, his pretty cats are probably hungry too now so but yes we've got a lot of great support from a lot of wonderful people this last year marty haven't we as as this program has grown and we were just mentioned to jessica our uh, trekkie techie that she's been with us for a year and uh, we're blessed with that because she has changed the way we present this program and the outreach is is growing every day thanks to you telling people to watch us on youtube and facebook like us, share us, subscribe to us, and uh, above all, buy a t-shirt, a Cali t-shirt. Well, let's kick off some Space Shuttles of July with the end of one that was launched in June. This is Norm Thaggard a few years ago. Uh, Norm is now 79 years old. He was born July 3rd on Sunday uh, this year, 1943, in Mariana, Florida. Marty says that's right up where the panhandle starts in the the north, uh, the north uh, west corner of the Florida up there. Uh, and uh, he is a URA, proud U.S. Marine Corps officer, and naval aviator. He is the first American to ride on board a Russian vehicle. And that was a trip to the Mir Space Station in 1995. That was in March 95. So Thaggard had become our first American cosmonaut. And there's the other five missions that he was on there. One of them, his first mission was STS-7 with Sally Ride, the first five-person crew. And I've heard Norm talk uh, at the uh, 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 Kennedy Visitors Complex about his missions. And one thing I stuck with me about his mission with Sally Ride and the STS-7 was that he said Sally Ride would not make a personal appearance without the other four crew members, okay? And uh, how cool is that about her? She did not want to take the whole spotlight. It was a team effort. Though she's the first American woman and the third woman to go to space after two Russian ladies. Uh, she wanted her crew there to acknowledge them from the appearances on the late night talk shows, uh, which I think was Jay Leno at the time, to an appearance at the uh, White House. So uh, uh, good for you, Sally Ride. And Norm, I remember saying it was a fun ride because they got to go to a lot of places that he never thought he would ever get to go to, including the White House. So why we have Norm up there again today for his belated birthday is this was his seat on the way back. Oh, Marty, we didn't catch that it. it was uh, tilted there. Uh, that is a, well, he could be laying down like that. It's a fancy lawn chair with the webbing there that he, uh, that uh, Norm rode uh, back on STS-71 on this date it landed. Where did it land? All right, let me consult the scroll. It landed at uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center, okay, runway 15 on this date. Uh, after his 140 days 
in space on five launches, right? He was about 110 days up there on the, the Mir space station. We'll see some pictures of that in a minute. Uh, there's the picture of the norms uh, that he signed there with his missions on there. As you see the up-close photo of it, it's just a weaving, uh, uh, very expensive. I'm sure it costs a couple thousand dollars, if not a hundred thousand dollars, to design this thing. Let's go back and look at it laying there. But this is one of the centerpieces we have in our shuttle gallery there that was bequest to us through through some some means there. Here's Norm Thaggard working in the Mir space station on an exercycle machine. Uh, this was the first time that we visited and docked with the Mir space station, STS-71. There's Hoot Gibson in the center as the commander. It involved uh, four Russians and two, four, six, seven, eight, yeah, uh, and the others were Americans, to bring Norm back, okay? Uh, and I love this picture of the space shuttle docked Atlantis, made seven more, uh, seven straight missions to the Mir. This was the first of them. Uh, dropped off seven other uh, astronauts. It was a program where nine astronauts were involved uh, in staying at the Mir space station, including Peggy Whitson. I'm not Peggy Whitson. Um, oh, slap me there. Shannon Lucid was the only woman involved in that. So, uh, but this was the largest spacecraft in orbit at the time. The Russians, two Russians actually got in their spacecraft, Soyuz, to go out and make a little tour around to take this picture and an inspection. They wanted a, a truly outside view of, of how things looked and making sure everything was just right and uh, positioning those thrusters on the shuttle so it wouldn't hurt the mirror. Look how big the shuttle is compared to the mirror, Marty. It's just amazing uh, there. So I love that picture. So thank you, Norm Thaggard. He's 79 years old, doing good things in communities everywhere, I'm sure. Shuttles of July. And uh, thank you, Tom Celentano. He may be watching. He asked yesterday, what are the A, what are those numbers, A, D, and, and C behind the, uh, the date of the flight there? And that is my cheat sheet for the orbiters because I couldn't put C is for Columbia and I didn't have enough room to put OV-102, which is its tail number there. So uh, that's to help me have a little cheat sheet to talk to. Uh, talk to you all. I have it printed here beside me to uh, remind me of that. Right beside my uh, my $100 bills there. Hadn't shown my $100 bill in a while, Marty. This is what keeps our museum going. Is these Benjamins, folks. And it's tax deductible through your kind contributions. You could do that on our website up at the top of our page there. It says donations. Uh, so what we wanted to feature on the July, we launched STS-94, which was the reflight on July 1st. Uh, July 6th, yesterday, we launched STS-121, which was the real, another return to flight after the return to flight, because when 114 was launched July 26th with Eileen Collins as the commander, it landed August 9th, and the fleet was grounded for another year because of some problems they had with the foam coming off the, the external tank again and a couple other little anomalies they wanted to work out. So we actually, when 114 came back, we had a year downtime until 121 was flown on July uh, 4th, uh, 2006, by Discovery. Well, we wanted to talk about Eileen Collins who had two commands in the month of July, STS-93, uh, which was launched on um, uh, July 23rd in 1993, and then uh, eight years later, no, uh, in, yeah, 93, uh, and then uh, Ju uh, July 05 was her second command on 114. Here she is. Thank you, Mark Usiak, who covered the Astronaut Hall of Fame last month. This is her uh, being uh, 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 just acknowledged at this event. But our good friend Jonathan Ward has co-wrote a book with her called Through the Glass Ceiling to the Stars, the story of the first American woman to command a space mi uh, uh, mission, uh, let alone the first uh, woman, period. The Russians or Chinese have never had a woman yet command a space mission. So um, 
And we've had now a handful, six or seven women do that for sure. Here is, uh, I have not read the book, unfortunately. I've got a pile of books to go through, but I want to. There is the author, Jonathan Ward. And there is Jack uh, Lausma, uh, Bad Bobby. <laughs> there is his pseudonym in the space hipsters world. Uh, Jack Lausma, great guy. And uh, there is Eileen with uh, uh, Jonathan Ward. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, don't know if he's working on a new book, but uh, you, uh, he also authored Bringing Columbia Home with Mike Lineback, and then he wrote two books about the Rocket Ranch out here at American Space, uh, out here in, in Cape Kennedy. Here is a meme from Eileen that I think is important to, to know who she is. We want to explore. We are curious people. We look back over history. People have put their lives at stake to go out and explore. We believe in what we're doing. Now it's time to go. And that was uh, what she uh, said uh, on her first command, which was STS-93. We have Eileen's handprints here in the museum. There they are in our women's gallery. This is how the American Space Museum was founded with the handprints of astronauts at Space View Park, over 30 Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts represented there. And we have the uh, uh, Neil and Buzz uh, also here inside our museum, as well as in the women's gallery. We have Eileen Collins. We have uh, uh, Sally Ride and uh, the first American spacewalker that was a woman, uh, Kathy Sullivan. Well, our godfather of the museum, Charlie Mars, who was an important NASA manager in the Apollo era, then he was involved with Space Station Freedom, and he was also involved with the Vandenberg, putting a shuttle out there and building the Slick Six out there. Charlie is the one that harvested most of these uh, uh, handprints, a good majority of them, and he wrote a little book about them, harvesting the handprints I hold up here. But I'm going to say he's got a brief entry and not much to say about how he got Eileen Collins' handprints. He's going to say this. He was August in 2005 at the Operations and Control Building. Jim Kennedy was the director at KSC and helped arrange to get Eileen's prints. I met her and Jim with some of her crew uh, uh, in August 2005. So she was getting ready for return to flight. All right. Um, uh, uh, maybe this was after the mission. And uh, in the room, uh, as you in the front of the building of the ONC, he said, Charles Camarda, one of her crew, walked by the doors. I was pressing her hands into the clay and came in wanting to know what I was doing to his commander. <laughs> I got him settled down, and he stayed for the remaining task to make sure she wasn't hurt. So that's uh, Marty's, uh, uh, or Marty, that's uh, Charlie Mars recollection of doing the prints these were in clay and he had to press down on them real hard sometimes he even had to smack on the astronauts hands to uh, pound them down a little bit there uh, so that's getting Eileen's uh, hand prints there Eileen was born November 19th 1956 in Elmira New York all right in Andrew Oliva well, great uh, fan of our Stay Curious and who's been in our museum and lives in nearby Coco. Andrew uh, Oliver said that he ate lunch with Eileen at Space Fest a few years ago, and she's from my neighborhood in upstate New York, too. So uh, that'd be Elmira area up there. Uh, Triple T always said that um, Eileen Collins, as I go back to her picture here, uh, on her four flights that she had the pinpoint landing, the best landings of any of the astronauts to land a shuttle, because she flew those gigantic uh, cargo ships, uh, uh, was was part of her uh, training. What was she? She was an Air Force uh, undergraduate pilot at Oklahoma, went to, a, she was a T-41 instructor, uh, and uh, she was known for flying those big C, what are those, C-1, Tens or something, Marty. C-130, the big cargo ships. So she could land that big fat shuttle on the runway, uh, Triple T says. All the Navy pilots, you could tell it was a Navy pilot because they would they would scratch the brakes down, uh, skid the brakes down like they would on a aircraft carrier there. So let's look a little bit more at Eileen's career here. 
uh, STS-93. Uh, I'm going to go back and tell you a little bit about the... Um, uh, where's my book, Marty? Oh, here it is. The Patches. We're going to give you a little patch history here. STS-93 launched July 23rd, 1999 at 2.31 a.m., carried the Chandra X-ray Observatory into low Earth orbit, initiating its planned five-year astronomy mission that was, of course, a complete success. Uh, this was the third of NASA's great observatories following the Hubble Telescope and the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. Well, the patch depicts Chandra, which is named after a uh, an Indian native physicist who's who, uh, named Chandra, uh, it shows it separating from the space shuttle after a successful deployment. A spiral galaxy is shown in the background as a possible target for Chandra's observations. The two flags represent the international crew, consisting of astronauts from both the U.S. and France. And uh, that would have been um, Michael Tongnini uh, was from France on there. Eileen Collins was the commander. Jeff Ashby, the pilot. <coughs> Steve Hawley, an astronomer was a mission specialist, and Katie Coleman was on there. Let me get a swig of rocket fuel there, Marty. Ah, tastes good. All right. Mark Pestana designed the patch. So now you know. Every patch has a unique meaning behind it, uh, and some have more meanings than others. You'll see when we get to the return to flight patch of Discovery 114. Uh, so what we got next up there is the crew that I just mentioned there. Eileen, Steve Holly uh, in the middle there. Uh, Katie Coleman's on the, on the right. In the middle is the uh, Thomas. No, uh, in the middle is the uh, the Frenchman Tong Tongnini, and then uh, Jeff Ashby, the pilot. Jeff Ashby, the pilot's in the middle there. Of course, Tongnini's got his French patch on there on his sleeve. And uh, Eileen was known for this poster. These would be safety posters. Marty worked on the uh, launch process system on the shuttle engines. And Marty, I don't know if you ever saw this going down yeah. the hallway. You remember this one? He waves, yep. He goes, he saw it walking down the hallway. Uh, and it was, are you ready for us to go? And that's Eileen with one of her daughters, okay? Think safety which the poster, the subliminal message is, do your job or I could die. And uh, how subtle can you put it there? But uh, And these posters were, are become famous uh, uh, kind of works of art. Uh, the later missions, they even took on a Hollywood poster style technique there. But uh, what a cool picture. Uh, and I've seen that in some of our collection stuff from time to time. Well, that was a great mission, a quick five-day mission. Uh, like Hugh Harris recounted for us yesterday. Uh, and then uh, was the return to flight, uh, and, and she waited, uh, uh, boy, uh, um, STS-93 was in, what year was that? I'm going to double check my, my, my scroll here. I can't believe she waited that long to fly. 93, they're so out of order uh, in this. 93 was, uh, wow. Um, I've got to find it now. I'm in too deep. 93 was 99, 1999. I've got 93 there. I knew that was wrong. It was STS 93. 1999. Okay, so she waited six years between commands to fly again. Uh, the launch was the, the, the 23rd uh, of July. And then the 26th was the return to flight. Here is the mission patch of it. <clears throat> the patch design signifies the space shuttle return to flight and honors the memory of the STS-107 crew. The blue space shuttle rising above Earth's horizon includes Columbia's constellation of seven stars echoing the STS-107 patch and commemorating the seven members of that mission. The 107 patch is the only patch that is the shape of a space shuttle. The STS-114 crew will carry the memory of their friends on Columbia and their legacy back into Earth orbit. The dominant design element of the patch is the planet Earth, which represents the unity and dedication of the many people whose efforts allow the space shuttle to safely return to flight. Against the background of Earth at night, the blue orbit 
represents the ISS and the EVA crew members on that mission are named on the orbit. Noguchi, Robinson, and Thomas all did EVAs, extravehicular activities, or spacewalks on this. The red sun on the orbit signifies the contributions of the Japanese Space Agency to the mission and to the ISS program. The multicolored space shuttle plume represents the broad spectrum of challenges for this mission, including the space shuttle inspection and repair experiments in the International Space Station resupply and repair. So, so much meaning can be into these patches and the astronauts, it's one of the first things they do, Marty, is they sit down and design the patch. The commander kind of does that as a way of um, uh, seeing the, how the crew reacts with the, everybody in there. So. Marty, just let me know that Dave Stangy's watching. Faithful Dave, thank you. Mark and Tom Usiak. Robert Law is enjoying an evening up in Dundee, Scotland. Uh, we mentioned Carlton Bailey. Thank you for watching. Linda Lee Andruski and Cynthia Rossi. Thank you, Cynthia, for watching. Uh, come by the museum and say hi someday. We've got a lot of people that also like things on, on the uh, our uh, uh that we post on Facebook, and I want to acknowledge Michael R R Ronaldo. Thank you, Rinal Ronaldo. He is an excellent sound man that did our sound in, on the, our shuttle fest, and we'll be doing sound at any of our events that we need him. Michael Ronaldo, thank you. Perry Hall, Melissa Pope is watching at the Space Coast Office of Tourism. Uh, George Ming 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 Wingira is on there. Yvette Weingold, John Allman. Renee Ratcliffe, thank you very much. Talk of Titusville frequently likes things we post, as does the Space Coast Facebook website. So, uh, all right, let's get into the mission that Eileen commanded a little bit there. Put the pictures up there. And there is the crew of STS-114, the return to flight. The pilot was James Kelly, Charles Camardi, Wendy Lawrence, Sochi Noguchi, uh, Stephen, Stephen Robinson and Andrew Thomas uh, were all members of this crew. Third, almost 14 days in, in flight. It was uh, once they got to space, they didn't have. They had a few little things to work out. There was uh, three spacewalks. Uh, there was a um, the, a complete inspection of the uh, underside of the belly and the wings with an, a longer robotic arm they put an extension on it so that they could check uh everything on there uh so uh it was a uh, a good mission except for the foam coming off uh the uh et tank and and uh uh it there was a protruding gap filler all right and robinson went out and attempted to pull it with his hands or or remove it and uh, uh at the time and they, they also worked out, there was a puffed out thermal blanket near the cockpit. Uh, so uh, a couple of these concerns were tested out in wind tunnel tests and, th and there were little reason for concern about the, these anomalies during re-entry, but still they wanted everything right for the next flight, which 114 was followed in space by 141 uh, a year later. And uh, the, ju the juxtaposition of these numbers is something that a worker like Marty working on the LPS, Launch Process System, uh, they start working on something. You can't change the number in the middle of it because everyone has to follow the same train of thought. Yeah, Marty. I think you said 141 followed 114. Okay. One four, uh, 121 <laughs> followed 114. Uh, and if I said 141, then I'm into some imaginary shuttle flights there because we only went up to 135 but thank you marty stumbling around here a little bit today here is that gorgeous photograph of uh mark usiax the uh the look at the uh uh one two three four five six seven eight nine panels there good job click 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 that gives you a good idea how quick that shuttle comes off that pad too and the 114 had its perks like a visit to uh, President uh, George Bush's uh, uh, Oval Office there with the whole crew. All right, to acknowledge that America was back in space. There you see the astronaut, the uh, White House photographers, and uh, 
I've had the privilege of meeting Eileen a couple times. She's a very personable lady. Uh, I mean, I know some of you have met her before and will probably make comments of just how unassuming and humble and, and smart and just engaging she is to all the people around her. Uh, you really get a sense of like, you know, uh, she likes talking to you. Some astronauts, you know, everyone has their days. Uh, but uh, she, uh, uh, every time I've met her four or five times, she's just so engaged. And hopefully she'll come to our, our museum someday and do a Stay Curious program. She is aware of the program. Thanks, um, uh, thanks to uh, uh, people like uh, 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 the, her, her author and, uh, uh, and the UCACs that, that have known her for years on there. Um, I'm stumbling here to remember the author of the book, John Jonathan Ward. Jonathan, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank Jonathan has let it be known what we do here, and we appreciate that. But she's just an awesome person, and we hope you get to know her. There is 121 that is launched tomorrow. Uh, we will talk. Uh, 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 so we'll talk about that. We talked about that earlier. There, a uh, a very very hard hat finishing up the finishing touches on the space station up there, on there. So we were going to reprise a show tomorrow because Marty and I both have obligations. That we're not going to, or Marty will be here. I have an obligation I can't get out of. <clears throat> and uh, we are going to take you back to two years ago when Marty and I did a show on July 21st, old school, out in Space View Park. Uh, and there will be a drop in the middle of it as we lost audio and then we go back to it. So warts and all, we're going to show one of our very first shows two years ago, talking about the Apollo 11, beautiful Space View Park, the... Uh, the statue of President Kennedy out there. And uh, we did it all uh, with the, the audio is with one of those conference speaker phone uh, deals. And it, it does sound pretty good. <clears throat> but uh, so we're going to do that tomorrow to reprise a little bit and sort of kick off our celebration of the 53rd anniversary of Apollo 11 landing on the moon. And we've already got some guests lined up uh, 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 in two weeks for that. So Marty, anything else? We th thanks for Steve Hammer, Perry Hall, Mark Kirkman, uh, Danny Hunnison, uh, Denny No, uh, and Esteban Muzillo. Thank you for liking our posts on Facebook. And, and uh, if you find your heart to share them with your friends, that's how we increase our numbers that are so important to our nonprofit here. Well, thank you, Marty. We'll go out with this uh, picture <coughs> of... Uh, Wonderful Eileen Collins there uh, and Mark Usiak. We were at the hotel where we had Shuttle Fest and uh, I was doing some details there. We got in the elevator. It went down one floor and Eileen popped on the third floor with us off the third floor into the elevator. And we ended up talking to her for a good 45 minutes uh, there in the lobby. Uh, just just a wonderful person, uh, very involved and interested in all kinds of things. Uh, even photography and astronomy, Marty, in my wheelhouse there. So uh, thank you, Eileen Collins. We'll be in touch with her one day here on Stay Curious. Don't forget, you can get your your exclusive Cali Artwork t-shirts as our fundraiser for our new carpet that we're so excited to be getting. We will be closed from July, uh, what are we saying, July uh, 16th, uh, 8th, yeah, July 8th. No, the, the 18th. Yeah, the 18th. Look at the calendar. 18th through August 8th. We're going to close three weeks and then open up with brand spanking new <coughs> uh, carpet in here. We will continue doing Stay Curious, though. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. We'll be doing, Marty and I will be doing Stay Curious shows throughout. They're just going to kick us out of our studio uh, gallery room for uh, a day or two. And we'll do, we'll, we'll, maybe, maybe we'll go out to Space View Park if it's not too hot. It's hard to get out there now because it's, we know it's probably going to rain at this time of day. So, And there's where you can QR code those t-shirts and Chris Callie sitting there with his pop. And uh, Chris is totally behind this. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of his artwork and his father's as we will start featuring it on Stay Curious to help you stay curious. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, our wonderful staff here. Uh, uh, we've been involved the last two weeks getting out your purchases from our successful auction. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, uh, it's all been good here in the summertime in the middle of Florida. So <clears throat> until next week, personally, we'll come live. Tomorrow, watch a rebroadcast from two years ago from Space View Park. Until then, I'm Mark Marquette, hoping to see you soon to bridge the space between us.